Hello everyone, this is the Codemaster here. Today I'm going to be doing a tutorial on scripting. Um, this tutorial will be very basic today. We're not going to really be doing much in the more advanced realm like animations. But this tutorial will teach you just the basics of scripting by printing a line into the console that says Hello World to show that our script can run in No Limits 2. Now the first thing we need to do in scripting is to get a script editor, or just like a text editor. I personally prefer Notepad++, just search it on YouTube, not YouTube, Google, and you'll find it. It is brilliant, and I like it because it really works well with Java-like code languages, just like this one. Um, I highly recommend that if you know Java, to give this a shot by yourself, because Java is very similar to this, but even so, I still recommend you watch this tutorial because a few things are slightly different. Anyway, let's get started with this by typing the first line of code, which is not too difficult really, um, if you're a beginner, to wrap your head around. So, oh yeah, one last thing, Java is case sensitive, or this is also case sensitive, because they are both the same thing pretty much, except for a few differences. So it does matter if you type something in all caps compared to if you don't. So the first line of code we're going to be typing is to import all the stuff necessary to make a No Limits 2 um, script. Let's get started with line. So we type import, which means we're going to find something. I'm going to do com dot no limits coaster dot star and then semicolon. Now basically what we're doing is we're finding a package inside of a file which we which the program is and we're importing all the necessary features from this location okay the next step is to create a class because right now this is just a program that imports something but it doesn't import it for any reason so I'm going to go down and we're going to type public class and then we're going to type the name of what we want to name this script. I'm going to call this Hello World. Hmm. Sorry, I'm feeling a bit under the weather right now, so... Anyway, it's a funny sniff a lot. Sorry. <laughs> anyway, you can see, Hello World. Now we need to type something after this, and then we'll explain what it is. So, extends com dot no limits coaster dot script like that hmm. actually script should be capitalized I believe anyway so you can see so we're doing is we're creating a class called hello world that is at, which is public and what public means is that it's accessible by any part of the program or the hot any part of the whole like application. If we type private, um, that would change things up a bit, but we want to keep this as public. Now what we're doing here is we're basically doing something similar here, except we're making this class become a version of this class here, the com.nolimitscoaster.script class. Now this makes it so the program will recognize this as a class and will allow us to import some important... Uh, we don't want to put a semicolon in the end, by the way. Will allow us to have some important methods in here, basically groups of code, that will allow our script to run. Um, okay, so at the end of this line, you want to put a open squiggly bracket, and then tab down four times and put a closed one. And just, I like to do this so we kind of indent once in the fifth line in, so it just looks a bit nicer. So, so far we have the importing the files, the class definer, what the class is, and everything inside the class will go inside here. Okay, so now we've got to create a method. A method is a group of code, which is, when called, will do a certain action. Now, the script file has one method called onInit, which will run every time the program starts. So... The way we achieve this is by going public bool on init. 
Now, I know it may get confusing where it says public class. You think this is a bully, a bull, but no, this is not because a class is different to a method. So you can see here, when we define the method, the class name, we didn't put any curvy brackets after it. But when we did it in the method, we did. Because these curvy brackets tell us that this is a method and not anything else. Now, bool is basically a boolean. It's basically a true or, f or false. That basically means so you can set this value here to return or basically give back a true or false statement. We'll get more into the return later. Anyway, so we've got public bool on it and then two curvy brackets. Now what these curvy brackets are here for is because inside this type, these curvy brackets you could put arguments, but this method does not contain any arguments. But you'll see later on when we do on next frame that there will be arguments like integer i and tick or something like that. Anyway, so basically you can import integers into the method so it can do some things. But just like we did here with these squiggly brackets, we're going to do the same. Like that. So now we have a class, and inside that class we have a boolean, or not boolean, uh, a method, and inside that method is going to be some code. And this code is going to print out the line hello world into the console to prove that our script works. And this can be achieved using one of the Java's most famous lines of code, system.out.println. Now what this does is it goes to the class system.out.println or println and actually it goes to the system.out class and finds the method println. You can see when we're calling on a method we have those brackets on after it as well just like here and inside and it requires a string or a string of letters but basically all that is it's just some text inside of speech marks. So you just type hello world. This part is not case sensitive. Inside here, it can be any case you want, but everything else is. So and then you just put a semicolon at the end and that would finish this class. So we have created a very basic program for no limits. Oh, I just created a marker up there. Oh, didn't know I could do that. Yeah, so we created this program. Now we need to save it to a location. So we're going to do file, save as. Uh, Let's go to the no limits folder. Ah, uh, so many folders. Oh, I'm running out of space desperately fast. Um, it's because I'm uploading so many videos for you guys, or trying to at least. Let's see, um, I made a script park for this thing. Actually, what about we use the park that we've been using for a while now, tutorial? Actually, I've still got to get a name for that. If you have a name suggestion for the park we built in the last series, do not like fear. Just ask and it, like, just request it because I might name the park that anyway. Go tutorial. Hmm. Uh, we'll apply it to the shark head thing we, we which I made and yeah. Anyway, so we're gonna save this script as the same thing we named it after class. So it's gonna be hello world, but we have to change the save type as to all types. You can do this on notepad too. And then change the and then put dot nlvm after it like that. Now what this does is it tells it that it's not a text file but a no limit script file and it'll recognize that in the program. So you just hit save and everything is done for now. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna oh gotta close no limits because I've got a secret project. Yeah anyway, you'll see more of that later. Anyway so we're gonna go and open up that tutorial park we are working on. If I can find it. Yeah, gatekeeper stuff. I've made a lot of park files. Wow. Okay. Let's go tutorial. So if you have a... Th I highly recommend that you know a little bit about modeling. If not, I'll just leave a model in the description which you can use for this step. And I'll just include the shark head thing. Because, you know, you, do you guys deserve something from me. I've given you tutorials, but I haven't given you any actual work. Like, files yet besides the coasters but I'll give you a um, shark code thing in the description make sure I remember you know what? I'm gonna tell my future self future self make sure you include it well what am I gonna do in the past but anyway while this game decides to take centuries 
possibly millennia to load. Let's look back at what we've done. So we created it. We imported the files we needed. We created a, a class. We created a method for that class, and we print, we're going to print out the line "Hello World" into the console. This this program wants to taunt me. Okay, go and go, go. Please go. You're holding up the video. It's not fair. <laughs> anyway, so there are a few other things you can do with scripting. Um, there's another method. I'm just going to show you. You don't have to type this. Public. Um, I think it's public void on next frame. I believe that's it. And then there's a um, a value in here which I've forgotten. Anyway, so that will do. That will update every single tick, and a tick is a short amount of time encoding. Aha! There we go. Uh, but we'll get more into that later. So you can see we've got our beautiful park here with our shark head thingy which we made now i'm going to quickly delete this actually yeah we're going to delete it and we're going to go to scenery and nlcso editor just like before we're going to open up that shark file if i can find it actually i'm gonna um there we go Oh, we already had a shark head that 3DS in there. Okay, we're going to do NLCSO. We're going to go... We're just going to call this shark... Actually, we're going to call this spikes. And then we're going to go to 3D model, and we're going to find our spike panel. Then we're going to go to advanced, fix ambient materials, and go to script, and click add. And then script class, and you'll see we have found our hello world. Now click open, and that should all be good. Press OK and save and close. Okay, we're going to add this spike panel right above the drop, because that would be kind of cool and scary. So let's go to park base and let's find our spikes. Now go to add object and place down the object. Remember, I will be including the download for these spikes or whatever 3DS that I include to download in the description. Um, the positioning will be slightly off because it wasn't designed for this project designed for a separate one. Mm. That's very scary actually. I would not ride this actually because it's unless it was safe. Oh there we go. How about that? That's just kind of fi funny spike panel. Okay so we'll do file save file leave editor and let's play. Aha! Missing return. You know what I was talking about the return earlier? Well looks like I forgot it. What? Anyway, so you can see that it says bool here. Uh, so we want to type underneath system to add a print line. We want to do return and then false. And then semicolon. Because every line that's not a class, a method, or a loop should end in a semicolon. Like this. And then just save that and play the park again. That's a brilliant thing. You don't have to unfreeze every time. There we go. It says that waiting for scripts to finish. Imported package not used. Anyway, it's fine. It says, hello world, when we started the simulator, just press escape and play again to see it again. You'll see, it says, hello world. Isn't that cool? Now, if you want to customize this message, you can make it say something like, something not subliminal at all. You just save that, press escape and play again, and then... The script shall run again, except for it will say something different. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. Hopefully this tutorial has given you a bit of an eye-opening on how to script. Um, I will be coming up with another one fairly shortly, so s stay tight. And, like, we'll sleep tight, I mean, but whatever. Never mind. <laughs> Just stay tuned, that's what I meant to say. <laughs> anyway, thank you very much for watching, and I hope you... Take some time to like this video and possibly subscribe if you haven't already. And goodbye.